Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. This spring and fall we're hosting a whole brand new series of workshops for teachers for math, science, English, and history. You should check out these workshops. We're going to be holding them in Massachusetts, in Florida, in New York, in California. Check them out. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Take care. Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath, here to do a new problem as part of the GoMath 2015 Teacher Workshop Series. We're doing number 37 on the CBEST Elementary Math Practice Test. Alright, here we go. Number 37. Use the mathematical statement below to answer the question that follows. And we have this mathematical statement. Uh, we have a fraction, 2 6, and we have this inequality symbol. And what this means this is less than, when, and one way to remember that is less than. You can imagine a little arrow here. When the arrow is pointing to the number, we think of 2 6 is less than whatever this number is. So we read it as 2 6 is less than something. And whenever the, uh, uh, and then this symbol here would also read this number is less than 6 eighths. This is a very, one way to remember that, and I'm just going to do uh, something like 5 is less than 10. I could remember that 5 is less than 10 by just drawing a little arrow, thinking that the arrow points to the smaller number. Or I could make a Pac-Man and think about the mouth of the Pac-Man opens up to the larger number, and I could read this as 10 is greater than 5. And sometimes we have a symbol underneath this that reads 5 is less than or equal to 10. That's another way of reading that inequality sign. Okay, so that's a review of inequalities. What we have here is this inequality where it's saying this number is less than something and that something is less than this number here. And it says which of the following values when entered into the box will satisfy the statement above? We have these values here in fractional form. Now, sometimes this throws people off. And I, I, I can see where it can, it can throw you off, but what I want to try and do is I want to try and uh, look at these, all these fractions, I want to represent them in their, uh, in their percent form, because percents are a little bit clearer. Let me give you an example. What's the percent of one-fourth? One-fourth we think of as equal to what? 25%. And one-third is approximately, and I'm going to do approximately here, 33%. So in percent form, it's really clear that I, I know that 25% is less than 33%. And one half is 50%. And three fourths is 75%. And nine tenths is 90%. And these are core fractions. These are your nuts and bolts core fractions that you, you need to know by heart. All right, so I want you to remember that one fourth is 25%, one third is approximately 33%, one half is 50%, three fourths is 75%, nine tenths, well one tenth, one tenth would be 10%, so nine tenths is 90%. All right, and once I've translated them into percents, they're, they're values that I can compare a lot easier. Um, this value here, two six actually gets reduced to one third. So that's really 33% approximately. And this 6 eighths gets reduced to 3 fourths, and that's really 75%. So what we're really looking at is what is between 30, what value in our options is between 33% and 75%. It's got to be greater, whatever this is, it's got to be greater than 33%, but less than 75%. So now, now that I've translated these fractions into percents, it's a lot easier for me to sort of see which ones are greater than or less than these values. For example, one-fourth or 25%, it's, it's not uh, greater than 33%, so we'd cross that one off. And this one here, one-third, well, one-third is the same as 33%. It has to, we're looking for some value here that's greater than 33%, so we'd cross this off. What about 90%? 90% is uh, greater than 75%, and we're looking for something that's less than 75%. So we cross that one off. Same thing with 3 fourths. We're looking for something that's less than uh, 75%. And so we get to 1 half, which is 50%, and I think that works. 50%, we could think of this as uh, 
33% is less than 50%, or 50% is greater than 33%, and 50% and is less than 75%, and that one works. So to solve this problem, what I've done is I've reviewed a little bit on inequalities and what they mean, and I've also, you know, turned all my fractions into percents so that I can have values that are a little clearer to determine which ones are greater than and less than. Uh, something you should always know about fractions, whenever the denominator, if there's a 1 in the numerator and the denominator is, is greater, the, the greater the denominator, the smaller the value. So 1 half has the smallest denominator here. It actually represents the largest value. It's 50%. Whereas um, 1 fourth, even though it has the, the larger denominator, it's the smallest value. It represents 25%. Okay team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. I hope you got some review of these core fractions. Uh, there's, it's super important to, whenever you see one fourth that you think of 25% or even the decimal representation of it as 0 0.25. And whenever you see one third, you think one third is approximately 33% or you know 0 0.33 repeating if you want to and one half is 50%. You know, or you know your uh, 0 0.5. It's really good. You see the core fractions. You know their percent and decimal representations right away. It will save you a lot of time, especially when we get to the harder problems. Okay. All right, team. This is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day. Take care.